Welcome to PTG TV. This is your host, Antonio Hicks. So let's get on a, a topic today, like the Chronicles of Belief. So we'll be, we're going to dive deep into, well, I want to say dive deep into, but we're just going to talk about some of the little stories and history and philosophies that shaped our, our worldviews. And primarily, it's involving <laughs> the, the act of religion and, and, most, and most importantly, uh, Christianity. And we're just going to uh, just dive deeper into like, how it shaped itself from how we got from one religion all the way up to this main one. That's not going to be nothing too deep because I just find it interesting because I'm bringing this up about what Louisiana just did when they enacted this policy to display the Ten Commandments within the school system. And now most people would say, well, you know, what's the big deal? It's just the Ten Commandments. But I would ask, too, and I would challenge that as well. What's the big deal teaching about black history? Then? Like if there is an issue, if, if you want to have a display of, of somebody's belief, and you want to display what uh, one uh, person you would hear that you see in the video coming up that actually sponsored the bill. She was like, "Well, you know, we're just we're just quoting history and truth." I said, "Well, if that's if that's the case, then why are we not? Why are we trying to ban books when it comes to historical things that actually took place within this country, not during a biblical times where certain people don't even believe in some of those religions?" So when we talk about religion itself. It's been really been the cornerstone of human civilization for over a thousand plus years. But when we look at but how we look at like how old is religion really? And what were the first known religions? So our first known aspect, I, I guess one of the first I can't because it has to be more because I'm like, I still wouldn't even document it. It dates back to the prehistoric times. So the earliest form of religion uh, expression came, it can be traced back to the upper Paleolithic period around 40,000 years ago. So these early religions were predominantly an 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 animistic. Can you talk about that? Animistic. I Meaning they believe that natural objects such as in, in places and creatures possess some kind of spiritual essence to them. Like, you know, almost like they believe in the soul and that they have some kind of powers. So one of the oldest known religious structures is the Gobekli Tepe, Tepe in modern day like Turkey. It was built around 9600 BC. And these ancient temples predate Stonehenge by about 6,000 years and suggest that organized religion played a significant role in early human so societies, which, I mean, you can actually, you can you believe it because, I mean, everybody wants to believe something out unless you, you know, you're an atheist. And another early form of religion is the worship of, of deities across or associated with fertility and earth. So, I mean, so, you know, just like some of the Indian cultures, they have deities that they actually worship and they, um, they pray to. So the ancient Mesopotamians were, for example, worship gods like Anu, in Enlil, and Inanna early as the 3500 BC. Similarly, ancient Egyptians were a pantheon of gods and goddesses with some of their religious practices dating back to 3100 BC. Now let's fast forward to the founding of the United States. We we took it back then because we want. I want to talk about how we were, you know, we practiced all this stuff back then. And I'm sure it was crazy as hell, and we still acting crazy as hell now behind our own religious beliefs, especially when they talk about the founding of this country. And we see a significant shift in the relationship between religion and governments. The founding fathers were well aware of the complex history of religious uh, conflict in Europe, and they sought to create a different framework coming here to the United States. That's why I get agitated when people start talking about this country was founded on Christianity when it wasn't. They were escaping their rule of Christianity or uh, Catholics or, you know, just the, of religion over in Europe. And it could have been, you know, they had some listeners in Tim Hunter. They wanted to do they want to run the streets and, and, you know, they didn't want to have those rules opposed, 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 posed against them to prevent them from doing it or making them feel guilty about it at all. So in 1787, the U.S. Constitution was drafted. And notably, it does not mention God or Christianity. Like people always talk about what's in the Constitution is not in the Constitution. It does not mention God or Christianity. Instead, the First Amendment ratified in 1791 explicitly states Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Again, 1791 is in the Constitution. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. This was a radical departure from the norm at that time. They wanted to break away from it, reflecting the commitment to religious freedom and the separation of church and state. So they wanted to allow people to practice whatever religious belief that you wanted to have 
and actually remove governments from governing what you can can believe and what you should not believe. Now, did you have elected officials that was of Christian faith? I mean, obviously, yes, you did. I mean, that's the person itself. But when we talk about the actual foundational truths of this country and what this constitution was built on, it was for religious freedom. So when you have other people coming in this country that might not practice Christianity, you weren't just killing them. As we have seen take place throughout history and over in <laughs> European countries and in, 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 in other, you know, um, other Middle Eastern countries too. I'm not going to even sit here and say that I'm, and throw no and, and slide past what uh, the Muslim faith did to people as well too. So I, I mean, it, it, yeah, people and their religious beliefs have been decimating groups of individuals that didn't believe in their. I mean, even to this day, even to this day. So the government of the United States is not, in a sense, founded in in Christianity. I mean, it's of course according to 1777. So the sentiment was echoed by several key figures, including Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, who championed the cause of religious liberty. Jefferson's famous uh, Virginia statue for religious freedom laid the groundwork for the First Amendment and emphasized that religion should be a matter of personal conviction, free from government inheritance or interference. So you want the government really pushing their own personal beliefs, kind of like what's going on now. I mean, that's what's really happening now with these Christian radicals and what they're doing. And I'm a Christian. I mean, that's what they're doing to push their beliefs onto other people. And, you know... This circular foundation, it has not always been without its own form of, of controversy. And this because of the controversy that they're, they've been causing, pushing their beliefs onto everybody. And that's one thing I can say about me. That's why I, I like to challenge a lot of people that will come at me about stuff that's in the Bible because I'm like, I grew up in a church. I'm like, I grew up in a church. And I had, and not just because I grew up in a church, you know, I actually, people know about the Bible. No, I mean, I had to actually study and read it. And then, of course, as I got older, I started getting it more into church itself, too. Not so much now. I'm, I'm religious, but not as not so much as I used to be, because I actually start going into doing my own research on it, and then looking at how people act and what they want to choose to impose from the rules in the Bible, as opposed to reposing all the things that's in the Bible. So there's always been a ton of debates and legal battles over the role of religion in public life, from school prayer to the display of religious symbols on government property, such as the one that I want to really get on is Louisiana requiring schools to post the Ten Commandments, something I just don't understand because it would be the same when it comes to other religions having their stuff posted in the schools, such as the Satanic Order. They want to post some of their Baphomet stuff in the school system. Now, like, if it's okay for you to post Christianity stuff and you want to say, well, it's a part of history, then let's post some things in regards <laughs> to uh, Christianity. And so that's one of my things. That is, and, and let's... Take a break and let's look at what the actual one of the sponsors of this bill, what she said. Critics of a new law say that in Louisiana schools, the line between church and state is getting blurred. The Republican governor just signed a law making Louisiana the first state in the country to require the Ten Commandments be posted in every public school classroom from kindergarten through state funded universities. The law specifies the commandments must be displayed on a poster or framed document that's at least 11 by 14 inches and in, quote, large, easily readable font. Opponents have now vowed to sue, and at least one high school teacher is saying he will defy that law, calling it nonsense. It's just foolish legislation. I mean, what's going to happen? A third grader is going to walk in a classroom and see thou shall not commit adultery on the wall and say, well, you know, I was really planning on committing adultery today, but... Um, since I read that on the wall, now I'm not going to do it. It's just nonsense. We have real issues. And Joining me now to discuss is one of the co-authors of House Bill 71, Louisiana State Representative Lauren Ventrella. State Representative, thank you so much for being with us to share your perspective. Does the bill specify what kind of penalty teachers like that will face? Uh, there's there's not any penalty un under the law. It's just a, a requirement that the classrooms should post what we know and believe is the moral fabric, the moral fiber of our country that should be on public display that the school children should have the opportunity to read and be exposed to. Now, she says that, but I'm like, what about the moral fiber of correcting one's actions of what you cause upon a group of people within this country itself? 
you have no problem with displaying your what you believe to be the correct and true moral fibers. But when it comes to what people have caused and got, did harm to other groups and entities within this country, you want to ban that stuff. Like you, in, they're talking about making a, a certain group of people feel guilty about who they are. Let's just say white kids are feeling guilty about uh, them being white because of what their ancestors did, or if they, if they even have family in this country, because they could not have family from this country. But anyway, what their ancestors did, they want to protect that, but they don't care about protecting people whose kids come from a different religion and don't practice Christianity. So when you talk about the, the moral fiber of our country, you realize that this country is... Uh an amalgamation of cultures, right, and, and different faiths. And even within Christianity, people don't interpret those commandments the same way. Well, what's important about this bill and what's important to remember about this country is that whether we like it or not, Moses is in the Supreme Court of the United States. The Ten Commandments are in the Supreme Court of the United States. Moses is on the law in Congress. This is part of and ingrained in our nation. This is a historical document that's important in Louisiana because in Louisiana, we believe in faith, family, and freedom. And that is why I voted in favor of this bill. So they believe in faith, family, and freedom. Then why, again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep referencing, why are you lacking the freedom to allow people to talk about historical things that took place within this country and you're opposed to it, but you have no problem with displaying your own personal religious beliefs. Sure, but you also recognize that the Constitution of this country, its founding document, doesn't include the word God or Jesus or Christianity, and that's for a reason, because the Founding Fathers founded this country as a secular one. You, you don't Boris, see that? I bet you, I bet you, I bet you CNN pays you a lot of money, and I bet you got a bunch what of dollars. What does this bills have to do with the wallet? network? And that's the thing you like for. Or you, you attacking this man? He just, he just, he pointing out a fact. This country was not built on Christianity. What I'm getting paid? Don't make this about that. Answer the question. Why did the Boris, founding fathers Boris, not include God in the Constitution if they wanted this country me, to be the way that you see it? Let, let me finish my statement. And Answer wallet, the question, and don't make this about me. In, in God we trust. We'll make it about me. I got a dollar bill in my wallet. In God we trust is written on that dollar. It is not forcing anybody to believe one viewpoint. It's merely posting a historical reference on the wall for students to read and interpret it if they choose. But fundamentally... You understand that there is a separation between church and state and that if you're a student at a school, say you're Muslim or, or Hindu or, or atheist, having that on the wall, doesn't that endorse a specific set of beliefs? Absolutely not. It is a historical document. Again, but, but the there are historical documents. Nation. There are historical documents. So there again, she going to say, absolutely not. It doesn't enforce anything. But realistically, it does. So I'm like, why? how are you going to say it doesn't enforce anything? So let's let's practice that same thing when it comes to other religions wanting to practice, post their stuff up in the, the, the school system. And or they say atheists don't even want their kids to be around religion. Well, you can say, well, you can pull them out of the school system. Well, why should I have to pull my kids out of a public school system that my tax dollars go towards when it should be separated from that in the first place? Because that's really what it boils down to. If it's, if it's always the idea of, well, unless, but then if you don't like it, take your kids out of there and they won't have to see it. That's fine. If that's the case, then let me pull my tax dollars away from that too. So since I don't, since you want me to take my ball and, and go home, then that's fine. Let me take my tax dollars out of it. So my tax dollars aren't going towards the school system within my, where I'm living at within that area. So yeah, I just want to get on that because I'm just, it's interesting to me that when we start talking about religious beliefs and where we are in this country, I always want to point out the framework of, oh, well, this country was founded on Christianity. It's like it was not founded on Christianity and how it's always used to separate us. I mean, we fought countless of wars throughout history over the sake of religion. When, and I'm a very, I'm a, again, I'm a religious person, but I'm one of the ones that's a belief that I don't oppose. I don't, I don't enforce my beliefs on anybody else. And I always find it interesting when people start talking about religion, especially Christian, Christians, they always want to condemn certain aspects. Like I had to clap for somebody the other day. They want to condemn certain aspects of, of people, of things in the Bible. Like some of the, And the go-to thing is always LBGTQ stuff. Whether you believe in it, whether you agree with it or not, my thing is you shouldn't be trying to 
condemn and always talk down on a certain group of people because I'm like, well, the Bible speaks about I mean, a bunch of stuff in there. So I'm like, so you aren't talking about people that's grossly over obese in this country. The, your body is the temple of God. It says it clearly in the Bible that your body is God's temple. So your temple should be kept clean. So if your body is the temple of God, then why are we not discussing obesity within this country? I'm like, why are we not talking about people where it says the Bible says do not eat of an unclean animal, but we eat a ton of pork. We eat a ton of pork. And it's, hell, it's, it's in our guns. We have pork. If you didn't know that bullets are made utilizing a, a pig fat, it's same it was in our medicine, gelatin. So I'm like, we don't discuss that as well, too. So I'm like, if you're so concerned about what's in the Bible and you're concerned about, you know, of, of people that's uh, practice homosexual, that's homosexuals, it's of the LBGTQ community, and you're always against them. But I'm like, you're not pointing out everything that's taking place in the Bible and what people are doing. I'm like, you're just a freaking hypocrite. And that's what pisses me off, because I was like, we're we going to start enforcing the rules. I'm like, I, I told somebody the other day, I was like, heaven, heaven going to be empty, and hell going to have a waiting line outside the door with a checklist checking every, off everybody. But, and you can always say, oh, well, I can repent. Oh, no, you, you, I mean, if you're eating all this stuff every day, or you you a certain weight. I was like, you can repent all you want unless you're doing things and, and to put things in place to make sure uh, your body's not like that. And especially when you're talking about idolizing stuff. I'm like, we idolize a dollar bill within this country. Like she just said, on the back of a dollar bill, in God we trust. So you idolizing the dollar itself. And of course, that's part of the framework. I mean, you can't survive without making any money. But that's my point. I'm like, we, we glamour... Again, we talk about 45 and how he's a billionaire and, oh, he did, he's a successful business. So you putting this man on this pedal so then you idolizing him as opposed to worrying about yourself and your, and your own family. So, yeah, I just want to hit on the topic today because I think his religious beliefs within this country is crazy and how they're always constantly wanting to force things that they believe in, but the actual historical stuff they want to cut out. So. Thank y'all for tuning in to this episode and make sure that if y'all want to see any of my gaming content, so if you come and hang around, you want to see some of my gaming content, my streams, go follow me on the House of Matrix. It's my new YouTube channel where it's strictly nothing but my gaming streams and gaming content that's over there. I'm going to post some stuff on this channel too. I'm going to break it up. It's not going to be as long a form of content as it was on my, as it was previously on here. So I'm going to still keep up those same videos that's on here. So you can go back and watch some of those if you want to replay them of me doing my live streams and whatnot. But all of my live streams now are on House of Matrix. So go over there and subscribe and follow me on the House of Matrix. And again, I do have a book out. So if you're into content creation when it comes to like creating ads or doing podcasts, I have my book out on my website, The Ultimate Technical Guide to Creating a Podcast. It is on PTGTV dot online that is where my books published it. it's on other platforms as well too so you can get it on amazon you can get it on apple ibooks you can get it on google play books it's, it's out it's out there as well but if you get it directly from me at pgdtv dot online then you can set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me where i can help you out with whatever topic you have within that book even sit down and help you go through a um on how to edit a video or do an audio video editing it's, well but it's the same thing audio video editing so Thank y'all for tuning in this episode. Let's talk about, like, how do you feel about what they're doing enacting some of these laws? Because I don't think we talk enough about policy. I'm going to start doing more of that as we get closer to this election. Talking about policies and some of the things that they're pushing out. And it's and like I said, it's always interesting because I'm one of the ones, that's, I'm the boots on the ground type of person. I'm the one that's got to knock on these doors. I'm the one that's out actually speaking to actual people. And I'm not just enforcing something. And I'm just sitting back in the conference of my home waiting to see what happened. I'm not one of those people. I'm the one that actually has to go out and communicate, which is why I have a problem with you know, the Democrats and they're trying to get us to push this old, these old people. And I hate to say it, and I'm not being ages, but it's these old people to uh, younger people. And I'm like, what do you want me to say when going out talking to these folks? You want me to play the boogeyman and scare them about what 45 is going to do? But anyway, thank y'all again for tuning in to this episode. Y'all be safe out there, especially be safe out there because this summer, this heat right now, and the summer just started a couple of days ago. It's extremely hot. Like here in Georgia, it's like in the, the high 90s, which means it's almost it's like 97, 96, 97, which means almost 100. Well, it probably practically feel like it's a hundred every single day for this this, this next week and a half. So y'all stay hydrated, y'all uh, be careful out there. You know, like I said, stay hydrated, stay keep yourself cool. Until the next time, PCD TV out.